What's up, y'all? It's Didi Conway, and I've shown you several hood films that I think are booty butt, but are still classics. Now let me show you some that I think are truly great. I'm smoking grits and selling chickens, call that painted living. It's Gucci. Living's on the chain with the meat cuts. At number five, he got game. Somebody call a stretcher. Stick a fork in him, he's done. If you say you was a hooper, and it's not at least in your top five of basketball films. You smoking dick. Are you smoking on dick, bro? <laughs> Spike Lee was a master genius telling us this story, bro. That boy is good. Strong characters grounded in real reality gave us a perspective of what it's like to be a highly recruited player with the world pulling you at different sides. Okay. He's waiting for you? He's my big brother. It's your big brother. You dirty bitch! Hey, off top, she pissed me off because she decided she wanted to cheat with this one band, one sound ass nigga from Drumline. One band, one sound. One band, one sound. And I was happy as hell when bro Pops knocked his ass out. Huh? I didn't hear what you said. Huh? What you say? <coughs> my nigga. <laughs> as someone who grew up all my life loving and playing basketball, even when I got to college, he Got Game is like in my top five basketball movies ever. And it's one of my favorite hood classics. For Ray Allen to have no experience, I feel like he did an actually decent job, bro. Somebody call a stretcher. Stick a fork in him, he's done. Take your old ass back to attic. Like, I'll go as far as saying really good. If he's not in it and Kobe accepted this, I genuinely believe this wouldn't be the classic that it is. Kobe! He Got Game was a masterpiece to me. Everyone played their role perfectly. And although it has some trauma in it, it's not the biggest sole focus of it. I think it was well balanced and we got to see what it was like for a recruit in Jesus Shuttlesworth's position. And hell, bruh made all of us want to go to Big Tech and y'all boys know exactly what I mean, bruh. If you say you don't. At number four, Tales from the Hood. <laughs> the shit. The shit it was. Had to put Tales from the Hood on here, dude. I love scary movies, and most black scary movies are ass with a capital A. A two-pack of ass! This shit personally terrified me from the beginning to the end when I first saw it. It's easily one of the best anthology films ever made, bar none. <laughs> I believe creativity was at an all-time high with this because those dolls had me scared as fuck. Damn, this is some scary shit. And when I got older, I had to realize, like, they wasn't trying to kill niggas. Morning, niggas. <laughs> Ain't no funeral. Clarence Williams acted his ass off in this movie, bro. Welcome to hell. His acting alone is what made me glued to the TV, even though I was scared as hell, his acting alone is what had me watching and I couldn't turn away. All the stories in here, and bro was the scariest, but you had to think about it. Like when I got older, I had to rewatch and realize Mr. Uncle Tom was going through some shit mentally and he basically got blamed for them officers death. I was so scared back then, I didn't even realize that. Oh, freaky ass nigga, you a 69 god, boy. Why you make that face? You really freaky. But for real, Tales from the Hood made this list because it's the perfect way to deal with societal problems. Truthfully, some that we are still dealing with to this very day. It's a truly underrated movie that is scary, and you'll forget that it actually has a great message, dude, because it's so scary. At number three, The Wood. And this is easily one of my favorite hood classics and one of the best coming age stories of all time. <laughs> Fucking right. One of my favorite coming of age films is Stand By Me. The Wood is quite literally just a black version showing what it's like for very young black men to grow up in a neighborhood with his friends. <laughs> I'm really determined. And for a dollar, it was worth the risk. And the booty was looking good. Mm.
I was like, damn, nigga, what you doing out here with all this ass? That shit was realistic as hell, bro. As a kid, a dollar used to actually mean something. And slapping ass for a bet was always something at least one of your friends was going to do because they was the sin out. Nobody else was going to do that shit, but you knew they had no mind and was going to do it regardless. And I will tell my brother. Yup. And if you did it, the results would be you going to meet that girl daddy or you going to get that ass whipped by her big brother because they always had a big brother. I saw the light. A hand reaching out to me from the heavens. My mistake was his fist. Bro, I could go on and on about this movie, but I'll say this. This movie chronicles the black experience growing up with friends, from losing your virginity to learning how to dance. The Wood is the black stand by me, and I stand firm on it. Every experience isn't the same, always. But this gave you a glimpse of a real hood coming of age story. It makes me think of growing up with my friends. At number two, Friday. If you've watched this channel long enough, or you've just now started watching, then you should know. I love the movie Friday. I think it's the greatest hood film of all time. And for me personally, it started the non traumatic black hood films. Go this here, a little twin and twin twin. Wow. Mega. When we kept getting black trauma exploitation films, Friday stepped in to show the hood films could be in a different light. Not all things that go on in the hood are just filled with trauma and cautionary tales. A lot of shit is just straight up funny. We gonna let me fuck this fucker. I won't go into extra detail about this. I got a video on my channel about it. But this alone is one of the best hood films ever and it's definitely in the hood films hall of fame. At number one, don't be a menace. Let me start off by saying, if after all these years you still saying the full title of this fucking movie, you need your ass whooped. Something wrong with you. Stop it. Get some help. Bro, when it comes to parody films, not many can do it better than the Wayans family. Message. This shit is a parody masterpiece to take all those hood films and joke about how repetitive they are and the different elements that come with them. Dude, that's a masterpiece. Strike a pose. Now vote. Will, the Wayans will take your movie, deconstruct it, and proceed to show you how stupid many of the stereotypes and tropes that come with that movie are. They've done it several fucking times at this point. So will I see you again? Sorry, baby. You know there ain't no positive black females in these movies. You see what I mean? Don't be a menace satire is what kept me watching. How no one was off limits. How some of the people that they even made fun of would still end up in the parody version of the movie. They were on point with the smallest of details. And it was brilliant. College? Yeah. Finally, someone from the hood is gonna make it. Yeah, it is, Hope. <laughs> yeah! Also, they are part of what shifted hood movies into being less dramatic. The Wayans had some of y'all ass on edge, and that's why y'all quit making that traumatic ass shit. Wayans societal parodies are unmatched, and I wish they would give us at least one more before niggas get too old. Hey, that's my top five, and this is the beginning of a new series. If you liked it, let me know in the comments. If you got something that you want to see, let me know in the comments. I thank each and every one of you, and help me get to a 1,000 subscribers. Thank you.